Frenchie. Well, it's a very hard act to follow. Um, I have to begin by um, apologising that the pre this presentation is not the paper I promised in the abstract. Uh, in many respects, it's a follow-on from the abstract. Um, but I would be delighted if anyone wants to ask questions arising from the abstract. <laughs> 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 and the second thing is to say that um, uh, the paper actually consists of a lot of quotations from other people to whom I do not give credit. Um, I've been experimenting with this method of writing for a long time, and I call it parasiting, with a dash between the para and the C-I-T-I-N-G. Uh, the paper has nine sections, and I'll probably have to miss out one, and I will alert you to these sections as they come by. Uh, can you hear me at the back? Yeah. Okay. So the title is Thinking Aloud, Network Agency Orality. One, the matter of thinking is always confounding, all the more in, in, propor in proportion as we keep clear of prejudice. To keep clear of prejudice, we must be ready and willing to listen. So let's listen. Yes, let's listen. So I'm putting the needle down on the record, and here's the thing. Or I'm turning the dial till the static dies, or picking up the phone. Hello? And here's the thing. The music hasn't started yet, and nobody's started talking. And here's the thing. There's still a there there in the crackling silence. Here? Something, what we could call ruminativeness, speculation, a humming commentary, is going on unnoticed in us always and is the seedbed of creation. Keats called it a state of dim dreams, full of stirring shades and baffled beams. We do not quite want to call these things thoughts. They nevertheless go on. Thinking aloud or not, as the case may be, network, agency, orality, imaginary, real, symbolic. The garbage men are talking trash, deep in thought beside their truck. The job provokes reflection on essences and accidentals, paper or plastic, glass or can. Such distinctions seem to help. There is naming at the end, as there was in the beginning. Meanwhile, things keep piling up. Two. We are born into a network of signifiers in which we, in many ways, will remain entangled. Être un sujet, c'est être un sujet. That is, to be a subject in the sense of having agency is to be a subject in the sense of being limited by the laws of a culture. The Germans are dancing on wet planks and you've to send three and fourpence. According to Lacan, Symbolic networks dissect the human body, producing leftovers that cause desire. Both Butler and Edelman are gay Lacanians, or so I've been informed on various occasions through the network of rumors and gossip allegedly favored by queers. Someone in another's presence speaks. He wonders in his very singular fashion how he is situated in the network of the other each ones living or dead, and in effect, what void would appear were he to disappear, or in other terms, what place his presence occupies. They have laid a net for my feet and pressed down my soul. They have digged a pit before me and are fallen into the midst of it themselves. The symbolic net functions as a container in which much of the real of unmediated experience will be wrapped leaving the remaining elements of the real to exist, as it were, in the holes of the net. The gap between what the symbol can represent and what it leaves outside in the real can come to function as a potential space for creativity or desire. When the soul of a man is born in this country, there are nets flung at it 
to hold back its flight. You talk to me of nationality, language, religion. I shall try to fly by those nets. The letters of the body, as Lacan speaks of them, inhabit us as libidinal and traumatic sources, expressed in emotional tones of voice, rhythm, and musicality of speech, which strike and stir us. Leclerc even suggests that if it were possible to string together and speak or sing these letters in a particular emotional tone, the result would be to plunge individuals into a state of ecstasy or trauma, since this is their own unique equation of jouissance. I can wade grief, whole pools of it, I'm used to that, but the least push of joy breaks up my feet, and I tip drunken. Let no pebble smile, t'was the new liquor that was all. Power is only pain stranded through discipline. Three, network from the Oxford English Dictionary, noun. Arrangement with intersecting lines and, and interstices recalling those of net. Complex system of railways, rivers, canals, etc chain of interconnected persons or operations or electrical conductors, group of broadcasting stations connected for simultaneous broadcast of the same program. Verb transitive, to broadcast thus. The firm pulled Pym out of Washington and sent him to Vienna so that he could take back his networks and so that his growing army of accusers could draw its wretched computer patterns tighter around his neck. Cancer, June 21st to July 22nd. Networking will pay off, so don't sit at home when you should be mingling. <laughs> Love is in the stars, and discussing plans with someone you think is special will help you build a relationship based on goals you share. One definition of jouissance is what is uncaptured by language and therefore lives as leftover energy remaining in the body. In a clever retort alluding to both his incredible girth and to his network of influential friends abroad, the agronomist replied, Your Excellency, the weight of my body would break the gallows with a noise loud enough to be heard in America. Because the letters exist in the real, carried by such things as the tone, cadence, music, and cacophony of a speaking voice, rather than residing purely in the symbolic register of words and signifiers, they will always evoke a visceral impact. Mr. Leopold Bloom ate with relish the inner organs of beasts and fowls. He liked thick giblet soup, nutty gizzards, a stuffed roast heart, liver slices fried with breadcrumbs, fried hen cod's rose. Most of all, he liked grilled mutton kidneys, which gave to his palate a fine tang of faintly scented urine. Four, the main thing is not to let ourselves be led astray by over hasty theories, but to experience things as they are on the basis of the first thing that comes to hand. Stately, plump Buck Mulligan came from the stairhead, bearing a bowl of lather on which a mirror and a razor lay crossed. A yellow dressing gown, ungirdled, was sustained behind him by the mild morning air. He held the bowl aloft and intoned, Introibo adultari days. Halted, he peered down the dark, winding stairs and called up coarsely, Come up, Kinch, come up, you fearful Jesuit. On the one hand, Joyce became a writer to make a name for himself. But on the other hand, he aspired to create a universal language, hence implying a collective agency. <coughs> Writing is a techne like a drum. My thesis is that a similar tension between the demand for singular recognition and universal agency can be observed in transsexuals more precisely when they write. By locating the truth of sex in the experiencing self rather than in the reproductive anatomy, the body becomes an object of subjective agency that can be legitimately altered. Mm -hmm. Psychologically, something supports the body image, something one cannot see in the mirror. 
Lacan calls it the self, or the self as body, the body as image. That falls. What can be retrieved from this fall via the agency of writing is the ego. With Joyce, Lacan discovers that the ego scriptor can restore the subject's relation to the body. Writing helps incarnate the ego. The essential thing is to set the song in motion as a graph, the shoot or scion inserted in a slit of another stock from which it receives sap, piece of transplanted living tissue, process of grafting, place where graft is inserted, hard work, and not as a meaning or a spectacle. I shall keep singing. Birds will pass me on their way to yellower climes, each with a robin's expectation, I with my red breast and my rhyme. Five. The emergence of prose is linked to and determined by the emergence of specialist competences, the fragmentation of discourse, and the need for deployment of communication. There is therein an abstracting away of body. Prose's ability to approach all existing communicative situations formally, to abstract from them their mechanism, without at the same time taking on the human agents in the process, and finally to appropriate the mechanism for itself under its own agency, is its most singular procedure, the very basis of its strength. It truly marks the beginning of a process of reification. Reification refers to the moment that a process or relation is generalized into an abstraction and thereby turned into a thing. Language, according to both Quine and Kripke, can be described ultimately independent of its users. This is clearly the anti-agency element in analytic philosophy. Prose is custom made for prose. They shut me up in prose as when a little girl they put me in the closet because they liked me still. Still could themselves have peeped and seen my brain go round. They might as wise have lodged a bird for treason in the pound. Six. In philosophy and sociology, agency is the capacity of an agent, a person or other entity, human or any living being in general, or soul consciousness in religion, to act in a world. The capacity to act does not at first imply a specific moral dimension to the ability to make the choice to act. A moral agency is therefore a distinct concept. From the journal of Eric Harris, who with Dylan Klebold, Klebold committed suicide after killing 13 people in April 1999 at Columbine High School. It will be like the LA riots, the Oklahoma bombing, World War II, Vietnam, Duke and Doom video games, all mixed together. Maybe we will even start a little rebellion or revolution to fuck things up as much as we can. I want to leave a lasting impression on the world. And God damn it, do not blame anyone else besides me and V. Don't blame my family. They had no clue, and there's nothing they could have done. They brought me up just fucking fine. Don't blame toy stores or any other stores for selling us ammo, bomb materials, or anything like that, because it's not their fault. I don't want no fucking laws on buying fucking PVC pipes. We are a kind of select case here, so don't think this will happen again. Don't blame the school. Don't fucking put cops all over the place. Just because we went on a killing spree doesn't mean everyone else will, and hardly ever do people bring bombs or guns to school anyway. The admin is doing a fine job as it is. I don't know who will be left after we kill, but damn it, don't change any policies because of us. It would be stupid. And if there's any way in this fucked up universe, we can come back as ghosts or what the fuck ever, we will haunt the life out of anyone who blames anyone besides me and V. If by some weirder shit luck me and V survive and escape, we will move to some island somewhere, or maybe Mexico, New Zealand, or some exotic place where American can't get us. If there isn't such a place, then we will hijack a hell of a lot of bombs and crash a plane into NYC with us inside firing away as we go down. Just something to cause more devastation. 
Agency may either be classified as an unconscious, involuntary behavior or purposeful goal, directed activity, intentional action. An agent typically has some sort of immediate awareness of their physical activity and the goals that the activity is aimed at. In goal-directed action, an agent implements a kind of direct control or guidance over their own behavior. Section 7, I'm going to skip this one, and it consists of um, the descriptions of three uh, films, all called The Agency. Uh, the first one um, is known as Mind Games on Video and is a 1980 thriller film and has to do with subliminal advertising. The second one, called The Agency, is a 2001 TV series which was about the work, inner workings of the CIA. Um, the, pilot, uh, the pilot script was written in March 2001 and intended to be uh, shown on television on September 18, 2001. And uh, it posited a reinvented CIA tasked with a war on terror after Osama bin Laden's al-Qaeda plots a lethal attack on the West. Um, so that particular pilot, excuse me, episode was not shown on September 18th, 2001. 2001. Um, the third film is actually called The Agency, apparently the winner of the best comedy, Beverly Hills Shorts Festival in 2011. And uh, it is about a 20-something slacker, gets a job in a company that offers facial scanning technology, this is a mystery to me, that reports exact number of times any woman has ever been pictured during masturbation. On to number eight, section eight, and I'm working towards some kind of concluding comments here. So some words resonate and ring, reverberate and sing, sparking chains of sonorous and sensuous reaction. Surprisingly, network, for example, an easy word to say, sure-footed, sponde, two words, in fact, that go straight to the point of thing and action, net, work, monosyllabic, mundane, Anglo-Saxon, words that do what they say. Other words drop like stones, with no echoes and few overtones. Agency is one of those. It does not resonate or ring or reverberate or sing. It does not name an action, thought, or thing. It does not inspire, sets off no chain reaction. As a learned Latinate abstraction, neither mundane nor Anglo-Saxon, agency names a problem for theory and reflection and does not do what it says. Orality is even worse. A word that is rarely spoken and almost never heard, which is at once ironic and literally absurd. Absurdus means deaf and inaudible. A word that is difficult to enunciate. Orality gets tongue-tied and caught in the throat. And once pronounced seems to slip away without effect, like hot air or smoke. Another learned Latinate abstraction that sets off no reaction that absolutely does not do what it says, appeal to hearing or the ear. A word that is practically mute, deaf mute, and is not even listed in the OED, neither the compact, the shorter, nor the concise. I checked all three. It's still good as a Scrabble word, though. <laughs> From the Scrabble finder on the web, I'm skipping some stuff here. Apparently, orality is worth 11 points in Scrabble and 12 points in words with friends. Well, Q-E-D. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, things keep piling up. Strollers, hollow boned like birds, the slender stem of a halogen lamp, heliotrope straight as a saint. Someone wants to forget this stuff forget all about it. So the truck clenches its brow, closes its mind hard on the facts as it receives them. 
Each thing makes its own wild cry. Mm. Who thought so many kinds of throat? Under pressure, all confess. I never knew what I was for. It's raining, it's cold, it's dark, it's late. What's raining? What's cold? What's dark? What's so late? The clouds or the air? The sky? The day? No, 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 no. Thank you.